Hello YouTube. Today we're going to look at the standard Molly and Tenbrooks and add this to our ever-growing playlist of bluegrass standards that we can grow through. Stick around. <music> Okay, Molly and Tim Brooks is a great tune. I love this, and unfortunately, a lot of times in jam sessions, singers don't always know the lyrics to this, which is kind of weird to me because it, it's one of the first tunes that comes to mind. So many classic things that we have connected to this. J.D. Crow's banjo playing on the Bluegrass album band recording of this. Just amazing stuff. But what we're going to make a big deal out of today... This tune, as much as any other example in the bluegrass world, is kind of done all over the place as far as key signature. The examples that I'm going to point to, you can find a lot of this stuff on, on YouTube. There's a great video of Sam Bush singing this tune in the key of A, and it's one of those super pickers videos from Merlefest, maybe in the 90s or something. Um, so there's A for this tune, and then B flat was the key the Bluegrass album band did this in. Tony would sing it in B flat. Years back, um, third time out, used to do this one in B. There's a, a video of us from like 1993. If I had time, I would edit all of this, you know, examples of all this into the video, but you guys could research it if you're interested. So anyway, B chord, and then Bill Monroe doing this one in C. So, you know, depending on vocal range, and it's a solo, there are no harmony parts, so you're not trying to make all that work. So as a mandolin player, we shouldn't look at a tune like this and think, okay, I need to memorize a solo in, in a particular key signature. You should be able to play this song in any one of those chords. So what we're going to look at today is just taking advantage of open strings when we can and how the mandolin functions in each one of these different key signatures. The one that's the most different is actually A because of the open strings. So I'm going to play what I feel like would be a nice bluegrass solo that would serve this tune in the key of A. So that's a classic kind of rundown, melody driven on the front of the tune and then into a Bill Monroe style phrase on the end. I love that kind of as a, um, I don't want to say improvisational roadmap. You've heard me use that term before, but it is a particular um, I, series of ideas that we have that use different neighborhoods of the fretboard. And that's, we're going to see that trend move up the neck. But look at this. I've done a video about the importance of solid pickup notes. These pickup notes are leading to the root note, in this case, A. So we can't resist that as a bluegrass mandolin player that wants to come in solid on the front of a tune into that A note. Notice how I'm playing through all three pairs of those strings. I'm not going to get to do that in those other key signatures, but in this case I can, so I'm going to take advantage of it. And then another double note up to the seventh fret of the A string. So that's very much fiddle tune kind of language. We'll do that all the time, trying to play nice, solid versions of fiddle tunes where we reinforce those open strings with that seventh fret. So there's the front of our solo. Now we're going to the D chord, melody. I think I remember Doyle Lawson playing that melody in that particular place in a similar way in the B flat version. But I'm, so I'm kind of borrowing from that. And then stay into the melody. And then I love this lick. I might have even heard Bobby Hicks play something similar to that on fiddle and kind of picked that up. But look at it here in A. Open strings. On the E and the A strings. So let me go from the top again. So 
So that gets us up to where I'm gonna go into this closed position A chord. This is one of those playing out of a chord position, Bill Monroe style phrases. And I'm going for that kind of reckless um, thing that we would hear in Monroe. I have a, a video I can recommend for um, On My Way Back to the Old Home, where I talked about Doyle Lawson's particular spin on that style of Bill Monroe playing. You could go watch that, and you'll hear me talk about everything we need to know to play that phrase. And it's a very versatile thing that we can use in a lot of bluegrass to speak that language that we want to hear just like a banjo player studying earl scruggs we want to get into some of those chord position bill monroe lines and we're about to see how that could be moved up for all these other key signatures now i'm aware that that's kind of a vague breakdown of that but a lot of the like the there's i have another video called make a joyful sound that talks about open strings and and how to make a big deal out of that in the key of a there's plenty of stuff if you just kind of scroll on the channel if you hear me talk about something many times now there's other content that could reinforce that thought that could be a really good thing and you kind of learn how to use the channel to its full potential i think i'm right around a hundred videos that are on here at this point but anyway on to b flat where Tony Rice did this tune, Bluegrass Album Band. Interesting thing here, when we go to this shape, I have a lot of content about this. Most important shape, or the shape that enables the bluegrass sound. We're going to see that happen in three different positions. But here I would play... I'm going to get to start with that thicker sound of the double stop. That shape... And now we're in B flat, so I need a solid series of pickup notes that leads to that B flat. That's what I would do instead of trying to move up to a double stop here. I'm going to stay here in first position so that I can play that melody line that's about to happen where it goes to the E flat chord. So there we have that. That same line that was in A, so now we need to play with our index finger here at the first fret. If you're not familiar with this concept, I like to introduce it to people. You could almost think of your index finger like it was a capo, so that we're just moving that same line up a half step to B flat. So once we get to this shape, we're going to shift. I would prefer to play that with my index and ring finger because it's not a tough shift to get back to that first fret. You might feel comfortable using the pinky there. I don't. In situations like this where I know that it's not a really busy series of notes that I'm playing, I'll use my ring finger because I feel like I'm going to play more solid bluegrass if I do. There's the same phrase. What we did in A, moving up one fret. If you're not really on top of your the neck of the mandolin functioning that way, this could be a really great vehicle to help get you there. This is bigger than just playing Molly and Ten Brooks. So after this line up to the closed position. So there's the same exact outro, if you wanted to call it that, moved up to B flat. Okay, so let's move on to B. Here we see something really interesting. Even though we're moving up another half step, I would still play... I just use the open A string, just like I did in B flat. And you could play the B intro, or that series of pickup notes. You could slide from the first fret. It doesn't bother me at all to hear that A note. 
has a nice bite to it. It's the flat seven of the chord. So watch everything get transposed a half step. But now I'm going to get to use open strings again on the four chord. Here we, this is the big thing. Like the mandolin's going to function in a different way and it has something different to offer in B than it did in B flat. I can play that E string open with a really solid, you know, that Doyle Lawson kind of pop that you'd like to hear on something like that. After that open E, now I'm going to use the double note instead of a double, instead of a double stop, I'm going to play that double E note. And there's that line again. Now we're back to a carbon copy of what we had played before. But everything that happened around that E chord that we went to got changed because of the key signature. That's what you're always looking for when you do transpose. Just because all of that could be played closed position exactly the way that we had done it in B flat, it doesn't mean that that would be the most solid thing that you could do. So we want to learn to look for that anytime that we're taking advantage of open strings in an experiment like this. So now on to the last line. Same exact thing again from A to B flat to B, playing out of that chord shape. Okay, on to C, the last key signature here. Watch, once again... I'm still going to use the open A string to hammer into that root note. Here's our solid series of pickup notes that would lead to that C. You could play the slide. I love the A note. And now... Now we're back to a closed position double stop here where we had the E notes that we could reinforce. That's not going to work now. So we're on this F at the 5th and the 8th fret. There's the same melody line, and here comes our lick. There's that Bobby Hicks line. Now up to C. And I just love that. Like, the way those notes have that different tonal quality than they did in A. So it's like a completely different right hand feel when you're playing the mandolin all the way up here in this neighborhood. The way the pick needs to go over the string, I mean all of those things are really that's the place that you want to get that you're so familiar with the left hand and where you need to go and the phrases that are going to be best for each different key signature, you should be so in touch with all that that this is really more about like those things like I'm describing there, the difference in the way the mandolin feels playing that phrase in C compared to A, and what we need to do to get the best thing tonally that we're looking for. So you want to get past all of this fretboard stuff that I'm making a big deal out of so that we can think about what's really cool. And it certainly... You want to play all this so well that you, while you're playing it, you can really listen to the bass player or the banjo roll or guitar rhythm, whatever it is that you like to feed off of, as people say, and, and make everything that you're playing feel really great with that. Listen to Doyle Lawson's break and the way it works with the way that Rice is playing rhythm guitar. That's the place that your thoughts really need to be, you know, beyond how the fretboard functions, but we, we got to do it all. We have to do all this work. Hopefully this helps. It's a great tune. Let it serve as a way for you to get into, you know, being able to play solos and different key signatures.